been suspected yet? Does this defense have any heart? Let's no. Go. They suck. Versatility. I've been telling you all season, they Philly. They've shit on you. Oh. They've shit on you. <laughs> Don't you hear me, Jordan? Uh. Caleb Carter. Like, they shit on you. Oh. They shit on you. <laughs> They shit on you. Kill them. Oh my goodness! Did he say they they cock it on them? I hate the style of defense. I mm. Well, good Tuesday taco morning, friends. Mark Holmes we're here with my buddy Cowboy Joe Boo, as well as Joe Bear in the house. And as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. So let's get open for business here. and Let's wake up the football gods. You know, yesterday was a long long day for me i um got up yesterday morning 5 a.m uh picked up my buddy david wiley shout out to david wiley because we could not have gotten all that stuff moved and things that we had to drove almost 500 miles yesterday and just trying to get back home because i want to see the eagles game and i didn't get home in time for the beginning of it okay i'm listening to the the, the telecast on, on the radio and it sounded like it was going to be an Eagles blowout. And I was contemplating in my mind, it's like, ugh. Do I want to live stream this game last night? Because um, I'm just sitting here thinking, uh, Eagles, maybe they're going to blow them out. Because you'd heard that Gino was active and, and everything else. You got hope that Gino was going to be there. And then it's Drew Locke starting. Eagles go up 7 nothing by the time I'm here. And then they got the ball a second time, and they're driving. And I'm just like, oh, man, this is borderline going to be a blowout. And that was it. They blew their wide. They blew their wide 10 points there in the first half. And all of a sudden, Seattle's defense came alive. And, you know, they went down. They got a field goal before the half. They got the ball to start the second half. And crazy, the Eagles just could not get it going. Now, I want you to, I want to take you back because what a difference a day makes. We were showing up in Buffalo. We had Dak and crew and everything else. They were dancing with Ferg and stuff. You know, having a ball before the game, like, you know, we them boys, all we got to do is show up and we're going to be fine. We're going to win this thing because Buffalo's not a good team. And we walked into a bus saw. And after that game, this is what I got from my buddy. It, shout out, and I don't mean to throw you under the bus, but when you made a whole video. Yo, by the way, King Steve back here. Hope everybody's having a great day. Hope you guys are doing well. Hope you're hanging in there. Welcome, welcome, welcome to another Cowboys choke season. As sure as December arrives, so does Cowboys choke season. And. <laughs> It's just beginning. We're just getting the first small taste, the first wave of choking by the Dallas Cowboys. What a beautiful, beautiful thing. This game, the Cowboys just choked, has huge, I mean, gigantic, enormous, humongous ramifications for the Philadelphia Eagles, and we're going to get into it in a second. But before we do that, if you knew the channel. That was what I had woke up to. Um, yeah, that's what I woke up to yesterday morning. I'm listening to that with David Wiley going up to the, uh, Pennsylvania and I listened to all of it. He went through and how everything is wonderful for the Eagles and everything else, but I'm not sure that he was correct on something. I don't know. I could be wrong on this, but the way they were going to bring win the tiebreaker was because they had a better conference record. I think. Because their loss was to the Jets, San Francisco, and us. That was two losses in the conference. For us, we had a loss to the Cardinals, 49ers, and them. That was three losses in the conference. 
But now us losing to Buffalo is in the AFC, and them losing in Seattle is in the NFC. So we both have the same amount of losses out of the conference as well as in the conference. I don't know what the tiebreaker scenario is. If the Cowboys went out and the Eagles went out, I don't know if they still, if it goes to strength of schedule and maybe the Eagles have a tougher schedule, I don't know. But at the moment, you have to wonder. Now, again, we got to play Miami, and, and we need to take care of our stuff and let everything else follow as it may. But I'm not sure that the Eagles can beat the Giants. Now, now this was actually nice last night because, you know, here it was. The Eagles got down there. They got a field goal, and they're up 20-13. to 13. There's only a minute, like, 50 left. You got Drew Locke. They got the ball on the, you know, eight-yard line. And we're like, you know, this, this game's over. It's over. And lo and behold. It's on or something. Oh. I hear something. Sorry about that. There you go. Uh, Sorry. Yeah, guys. Uh, welcome to Philly Shakedown Podcast. It's a horrible, horrible night. There's no question about it. Uh, what a night, man. What a horrible, horrible night. All I could say, I, I, I'm just emotionally spent, Joey. I, I'm just mm. spent on this whole thing, man. It, it's crazy. We we waited uh, a, another week to see if they could change some things. We saw some changes this week, and um, it wasn't enough. Um, theoretically, I think the defense uh, was a little bit better today. Um I, I they, they really only had like two bad drives. They only gave up 90 yards in the first half. I thought, you know, we only blitzed one time this whole game. Um, but th- this is on the offense. This is on the coaching. Th- there's there's the morale is down. Nobody gives a flying shit. Uh, I'm sorry. It's over. <laughs> it, it's over. Um, with three games left on your schedule and a playoff game, it's pretty much done. Yeah, it's bad. I mean, I I don't know. I know. I know. You got a clean house, dude. There's something fundamentally wrong with this team. Um, just the way they went out is just horrible. You know, it, it yeah. really is. Mm-hmm. L. David Super Chat goes, Yo, Phil, you seen the Eagles Nation post about Nick said, Oh my God, it was him making the calls. Well, he he's got to stop. I, I would fire him too, man. You know, it, it's just brutal. I, I don't I don't know what else to say. You know, I can't sit there and see this team doing any damage in the playoffs when you, you, you can't you, you can't even beat Seattle. I, I'm sorry, man. Playoffs? Uh, talk about. You know, playoffs? It, it's not like me? it's just one person playoffs? one thing. It, it, the offense sucks. Jalen Hurts wasn't good. The coaching isn't good. The defense mm-hmm. isn't good. I mean, they can't get pressure on Locke. Drew Locke went 98 yards. With a minute left, dude. Yeah. With a minute. Wait a minute. Hold it. This sounds familiar. Let's see. Let's go to the tape. Well, what happened was that second game, we got our ass kicked. Or the second half, we just got our ass totally kicked. We couldn't do diddly poo offensively. We couldn't make a first down. We couldn't run the ball. We didn't try to run the ball. We couldn't complete a pass. We sucked. The second half, we sucked. We couldn't stop the run. Every time they got the ball, they went down and got points. We got our ass totally kicked in the second half. That's what it boiled down to. It was a horse performance in the second half. Horse I'm totally embarrassed and totally ashamed. Coaching, we're all, all, our coaching did a horrible job. The players did a horrible job. We got our ass kicked in that second half. It sucked. It stunk. Okay. That's literally what Philly 500 said. Well, you know, we are... Not the experts out there, okay? Understand, we are the, uh, you know, guys in our mama's basement. Grocery store, I used to actually swallow it, pause, but, you know. Joe used to pack in and he used to. I used to pack and swallow. I used to do a lot of stuff. Dude, that should be your, like, intro. Yeah. You know, your intro is known for. Wow. I'm going to do one last clip now this is jib sports and this is with seth joiner seth joiner last week 
last week where this guy was like, oh, it's okay, all we got to do is run the table. You know, I'm not worried about the Eagles, and they're in good shape. And Seth Joyner was like, really? He said, I don't know that they can beat the Cardinals. And let's see how the Eagles have beat them down now. The Eagles lose to the Seattle Seahawks tonight, 20-17. to 17. And how did they lose? They lost because Drew Locke, of all quarterbacks, took the Seahawks 92 yards down the field in a minute 24. The guy was afraid to throw the ball past five yards all night. All of a sudden, he hooks up with a couple of bombs, one to DK Metcalf, and then the killer, a 29-yard touchdown to Jackson Smith and Jigba, who beat James Bradbury, who was also in the other play to DK Metcalf. So, uh, listen, I, I got to tell you this. Had, had they even survived this game, folks, had they even survived this game, it, it would have been a hollow W because it's obvious now that this Philadelphia Eagles team has lost some electrical current. And so what does this portend for the playoffs? Well, for me, it portends nothing. It means to uh, me they can playoffs. get beat in any we'll single game playoffs? they go into you in the playoffs. Me? But for playoffs? the short term, in the playoffs, what they did tonight was relinquish a possible number one seed to the San Francisco 49ers. You can take that off the board now because they just threw that away. Had they run the table and hoped that the 49ers would lose to the Ravens, they still had a shot. Now where are they? I'm Mike Missanelli. Here's the crew tonight. It's Mark Farzetti, mm. Phil Colorado, and of course Seth Joyner. Seth, I'm going to go to They you. look I like they're at a funeral. Right All they away. need is an eagle's coffin right in front. I'm not shocked. I'm really not shocked. Because on my show this week, I ended my show with my prediction. And I said, the Eagles are going to lose this game 17 to 21. Okay, so I was one point off of my prediction. But I had the sense that the Eagles would find themselves tonight, you know, and win this football game. So, of course, I changed my prediction <laughs> of course. before the show and went 28 to 14. Um, I know everybody wants me to explode and go off. I'm just not doing it tonight because, you know, I'm out of that type of energy. This, 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 I said it. last week, this is not a good football team. Oh. And they just confirmed what I said. And it seems to me like the Eagles are really searching for too many things at this point in time. I've never seen so many young guys play in the game with so many implications as to what the end of the season was going to turn out to be. Like Patrick Johnson playing tonight. Um Eli Ricks and Joe playing tonight. Now, you already had one of your starters out, and you insert, you know, two rookies, and you're rotating them all through your lineup. You know, you got all these young players that are playing. Now, that, of course, didn't have anything to do with why they lost the game. But, you know, at the other end of the spectrum, you know, you, you change defensive coordinator. How does that work? Because the same passive-ass mentality that you had that led to, you know, your other coordinator being fired and sent upstairs is the same passive-ass attitude that, you know, Matt Patricia employed. Did you blitz wow. Drew Locke at all? All right, so we're going to leave it right there um, with the Eagles. They are definitely in free fall right now. They have, um, they, they, they have literally thrown in the towel. Now, Here's the thing. We need, we need to make sure we take care of us. It is incredible the opportunity that has been afforded to us. The Eagles have gift wrapped an opportunity. And see, here's the thing in life, okay? You can be the guy who sits there and blames everybody else for your problems. I've always said to myself, I don't want to be that guy sitting in a bar to say, well, if this guy hadn't done this and this guy hasn't done this, you know, I would be something. Dude, get up off your ass and take the shit that you need to do to be successful. I don't know what happened to the Cowboys in that game. Some people will say it's a conspiracy theory. Some people say it was tainted pizza, that it was the Cowboy players were sick. I don't care about these damn excuses. I cannot change the shit that happened or the shit that came out or how it came out from the illness, 
from being in Buffalo, from the pizza, from the fallout. You got three games. You got three games and a golden opportunity. You got the Miami Dolphins, you got the Detroit Lions, and then you got the left hand up commanders. You got your opposition who literally should be running away with the number one seed imploding for whatever reason. Maybe their warts are finally showing through. I don't know. But Jalen Hurts ain't that guy that he was last year. The shit ain't shining for Nick Sirianni. Their defense has been completely exposed. They've literally gone off a cliff. And now you need to take care of you. You need to find a run-stopping ability. And if Jerry freaking Jones doesn't look at this and say, maybe I should kick the tires on a Namakin Sue. Just l- let me just see if he has anything left. Just let me see if he has anything left. Because I got to do something. That is my fatal flaw right now is stopping the run. If Dan Quinn, who is incredible with getting to the quarterback's ass, Josh Allen literally throwing 15 passes. Maybe it's the best formula for him. But the Cowboys have to wake up this week. We have to wake up and we got to find a way to win three games. Get some momentum and get some home cooking in Dallas. This is a golden opportunity that we must take care of. There's no ifs, ands, or buts. And if the Dallas Cowboy players don't recognize this, If they don't step up, if they don't look at this and say, yo, here we go, then they don't deserve to be there. They don't deserve to be there. Now, they're off today. They get back on the practice field tomorrow. And I don't know if you guys realize how huge this is. We do not play well on the road. If we can still get the number two seed, bro, At worst case, at worst case, you got to play one on the road in San Francisco. That's it in a nutshell. I, I still can't believe the Eagles imploded like they did. I I still am in disbelief. I am thankful for that, for this Christmas gift and opportunity. But having a gift doesn't mean anything if you don't use it. Cowboys need to find a way to use it. I just want to listen to go back through and rehash ESPN yesterday so we can remember that we were in the same position as the Eagles yesterday and that maybe we try and do something different about it. What the actual heck? Honestly, it's just unacceptable at this point. Uh... There's no excuse for it. Uh, it's mind-boggling. I don't understand it. why we're not playing well and why we're not coming together on the road. It's a huge difference. It's what the, this next week of preparation and, and honestly these next couple of weeks are about is, is figuring out what that, that difference is and trying to close that gap. Uh, obviously, we'd love to come out, start like we play at home, produce like we do at home, uh, but that just hadn't been the case. What he's referring to is the Cowboys fall to three and four on the road. I can't wait to hear what they have to say about Jalen Hurts and crew. Uh, lower level competition, and this one obviously one-sided. So, as I mentioned, we're not going to a commercial for a long time. Get comfortable. Let's start big picture, and then we'll go small. Let's play America's favorite game, Dominique. Bad game or bad sign for the Cowboys? It's a bad sign because you wanted to see them be able to fight back against that O-line and that D-line being overpowered. That's the thing that they're going to have to go up against when they play the 49ers. The two things they're going to have to face 49ers is going on the road and also playing against a team that offensive line wants to run the ball and smash you in the face. They just had it happen to them again against an opponent that we don't think is as good as the 49ers. So it's scary for them. And then on the other side of the ball, we had a similar looking situation where their O-line couldn't really hold up against a pass rush that's not as talented as the 49ers. The the story of this loss, similar to the story of the San Francisco loss. They got out physical on both sides of the line, on both sides of the ball. But Rex, you were telling me before you picked Buffalo yesterday. Why? I picked them because I knew there'd be a letdown. And I don't disagree with what uh, Dominique's talking about. They did get out physical. They got Mm. out coach. They got out everything. Yeah. But... 
It's not surprising. And I'm going to tell you why. Look, they had, to, they had to get four wins in a row, right? Mm -hmm. And then they, they match up, and they had this game circled against Philadelphia. All right? And understand, this game is, is played with humans and not robots, okay? Yes, it, I mean, and they accomplished that, that great game. They beat their, their division rival and all that. Man, I knew it. It reminded me so much of when we did the same thing in the playoffs in New England. We had put so much target on them, like, we're going to go back. We got our butts mm -hmm. kicked by them. We're going to go back, and we're going to kick their butts and all that type of stuff. The next week, we're playing in the AFC championship game, and we come out flat. How the hell is that possible? I have no idea. We had a great week of pre uh, preparation, practice, everything else, and we came out flat. I knew it. It, it felt so so similar to me. I knew it was going to happen. It was the, a hangover effect. That's what the, the, that game against Philly was like their Super Bowl, and it's hard to come back from that, even mm -hmm. though there's four games left, including a huge one on the road. Absolutely. Uh, I took Buffalo because I think they're the better football team. A better football team. The Bills are better than the Cowboys. When the game started yesterday, the Cowboys' record was three games better than Dallas. Especially in Buffalo. Especially in Buffalo. It just, this was an absolute no-show from the Cowboys and embarrassing in many ways. They were out coached, out physicaled, well, out effort, out prepared. Mm -hmm. You saw why the number one seed was so obvious. Dan Quinn, great defensive coordinator. There's some questions to get answered. Yeah. It was a very clear plan by Buffalo. Buffalo was going to do two things. They weren't going to they were going to run right at number 14. That was a very clear plan and they were not going to block Micah Parsons. That was the story of the game. This wasn't a Josh. Josh did absolutely nothing. This was Joe Brady, the play caller, going, hey, number 14, here it comes. All game. Mm -hmm. and I, Michael, I hear you. You're not going to do anything. So watch. This is what we call hop the back. Mm. It starts on the left side of Josh. Okay. All right. I'm, I'm going to leave Dan, your lousy, right there. And just remember, just remember how they killed the Cowboys. I want to hear. I'm, I'm going to be headed to the Red Brick House. So, um, you know, I'll be catching up with them when I get back there. Um, I want to hear that same energy with them killing the Eagles today. I just do because as bad as that loss was for us, and it was bad, you could look at this and say, okay, you lost one. The Eagles have now lost. They have now lost to the 49ers, the Cowboys, and the Seahawks in consecutive weeks. And each week they've looked worse and worse and worse. You've changed your defensive coordinator. You're bringing in rookies that you're putting in there, moving them all over the field. Your quarterback is throwing the team under the bus. You got a coach saying we're not going to make changes and makes changes, and now it seems to be that the shine is off of them. You've got your player, A.J. Brown, taking swings at people on the side of the field. You literally have dysfunction right now with the Eagles. And I'm not sure that they turn this thing around. I, I don't know. But here's the thing about the NFL that we all know. It is a week-to-week -week league, and things can change really fast. I'm hoping they continue the slide down the hill and that the Cowboys can get their stuff together. Again, this is a gift. Now, the Cowboys have to take advantage of it. And as always, you know how we roll. We appreciate you. Peace. Disrespected yet? Does this defense have any heart? Let's no, go. they suck. I've been telling you all season, they Philly. Shit on you. Oh. They've shit on you. <laughs> Don't you hear me, Jordan Davis, <laughs> Caleb Carter? It's like they shit on you. Oh. They've shit on you. <laughs> they have shit on you. Don't Don't you hear me, Jordan Davis, <laughs> Caleb Carter? It's like they shit on you. Kill them. Oh my goodness! Did he say they they cock it on them? I hate to stop.